Yo, what's up, everybody? How you doing? This is your coach, Renz, and today we are going to discuss how to be happy. It's something that most people pursue, but we'll begin by the words of Lao Tzu, where Lao Tzu said that there is no way to happiness. Happiness is the way. And before we get started, I want to thank everybody who subscribes to the channel. If you're not a subscriber, come on over and subscribe to the channel. If you are watching this and you want to do more, then I thank everybody who is a patron and everybody who has become members of my uh, YouTube page. Now, this YouTube page, the membership will grow. It will intensify. There will be more things that we will go into the deeper understanding of things based on your ability and your knowledge and your participation. So I want to thank everybody for doing that. And those who shop at Uncle Ren's Popcorn, which is where I am right now, I appreciate you as well, which greatly supports the channel. So how to be happy? If I just took this and ran with what someone else said, what Lao Tzu said, then happiness would be summed up into four areas. We will go through those four areas, but we will take a more esoteric, deeper dive into it. Because let's be honest, since the time of Lao Tzu, right around 700 BCE, we have gained more insight. We, our knowledge base has grown. Even though there is there is nothing new under the sun, the availability of information is there. The way of life has changed, and we may not be able to connect exactly the same way. So we will dive a bit deeper based on how to become happy. Now, the first thing we must recognize is that many people even yourself maybe, you're running around and you're searching for happiness, you're looking to find happiness, you want happiness, you desire happiness in your life, but you just can't seem to find it. And when you do find it, it's, it's temporary, it's nothing that's maintained, it's a short dopamine shot to the brain that doesn't allow you to continue to maintain that state of being. And the first thing you must realize is that happiness cannot be found. There is not a pathway to get you to happiness. Happiness is truly a state of being. Happiness is truly the way. Now Lao Tzu put it in four categories. Those four categories are managing your resources, managing your relationships, self-development, and self-maintenance. In order to understand these, let's go through each one of them very quickly. Managing your resources. Many people initially cannot find happiness because they have a lack of the ability to manage their resources and they not let me say a lack of the ability, but they lack the discipline to manage their resources properly. If you are paying Peter to pay Paul, if you are expending more resources than you have coming in, then you are the type of person that is not managing your resources very well. Um, that's a simplistic way of thinking about it. Very easy. We can all easily establish whether or not we are utilizing our financial resources to its best ability, not even counting the other resources that we have. So I ask you immediately, are you managing your financial resources properly? If you're not, you cannot find happiness because you will live a life continuous, continuously in stress. And see, when you're always in stress, how can you find happiness? If you have stress, that's counter to happiness. So a stressful person who is only stressed by outside influences of finances, of resources, cannot truly live in a state of happiness. I know many say there are happy, poor people, but no, they are not. They are not if they are in a situation where their resources are not being managed. Now, are there people who live in conditions that we would say is poverty, is poor? but manage their resources well and they are happy, we can say that. Because some people in this world exist in a situation where were born into a situation where there weren't as many opportunities as you may have here in America or some other Western capitalistic industrialized country. You may not have, they may not have had the same resources available to them. So therefore they are managing what resources they have to an extent where they are able to find it. They know that there will be food on the table, a roof over their head, clothes on their back. They may not have all the other extravagancies that you have, but they have those. They may not have what we would call basics, but they have what they need in order to survive and have a happy life. And they are not lying in bed wondering, wondering, 
wondering if they're going to have enough, but they're managing their resources well. Another way we don't manage our resources well. There are those who come and they say, well, I want to start a business. You live in America. Okay. You want to start a business. You want to build yourself. You want to uh, elevate yourself in your career path. Do you take the online classes? Do you take the in-house courseware that your company has for you? Are you paying for a coach to teach you how to build a business plan and to open your business? Are you working with people who can get you uh, into the financial capital situation where you can open a business? The resources are here. Are you taking classes at the SBA? Are you going to whatever programs that are available to you, whether free or paid? And are you willing to extend your finances to pay for someone or some entity, some group to help you elevate? Do you, have you decided to go back to school, to get your degree, to get a certification, to go and get and acquire a trade? Are you doing any of those things that are readily available to you? Or are you saying that you don't have time because you're not managing the resource of time well? You see, if you desire to have something in your life, then you have to be willing to manage the resources of your time, your uh, information, your opportunity, your finances, your everything in order for you to get it. But if you're not, you truly are looking for happiness on a pathway instead of recognizing happiness is the way. So we must manage all re our resources in its totality in order for us to find happiness. This is my thesis on we must Understand having a balanced business and personal life plus your capacity equals infinite growth when you have that, when you are doing that, when you take that opportunity. So manage your resources, your relationships. Most of us do not manage our relationships well to where they provide happiness for, for us. Unfortunately, in the majority of our relationships, we are looking for someone else to bring us happiness. We're looking for our spouse. We're looking for our children. We're looking for our parents. We're looking for our friends, our siblings, our uh, extended family members. We're always looking to outside relationships in order to bring us happiness where the only thing that we can do is cultivate a situation that would bring about happiness for someone or be in a situation, allow ourselves to be in a in fertile ground that allows for us to be happy. You see, if we exist in a state where our surroundings, our environment is chaotic, you see a adversarial relationship with your co-workers, with your employer or employees, an adversarial relationship with your spouse, with your siblings, with your parents, your family, your friends, an adversarial relationship with your community or the next community over can never bring about a status of happiness, a situation of happiness. It is much like if you try to plant a tree in an area that is not befitting of that tree. You cannot plant a, a, a palm tree in Alaska. It will die. And at the same time, you cannot plant an evergreen tree in the tropics, in the Sahara. It will die. It is not in a relationship with the environment that will produce the ability for the happiness to be maintained or to come. And now the most difficult part is maintaining. How do we maintain that? Always keeping an equilibrium within your perspective of what you are looking to receive from any individual or situation will help you to manage your relationships in a way that happiness can be cultivated in your life and it is all cultivated because of you. Now, after this video, the next video that I will post will dive so deep into that and I'll give you a clue as to what it's about based on the title. The title of that video will be something like, if not exactly, stop blaming the devil and stop giving God all the credit. You're diminishing yourself. I say that at this juncture when it comes to relationships because we, how we relate things to ourselves, our perspective of everything determines our level of happiness. And in order for you to be able to do that, you have to look inward. All your happiness, all your joy starts inwardly and then shows itself outwardly. 
And if another person is part of that development, part of that environment, part of your schema, then you can have happiness with those people and believe those people can have happiness with you if you fit their strategy, their situation as well. So managing your relationships and your perspectives in those is vital. And I'll give you uh, an exercise that you should follow in order to rectify or situate yourself within your relationships. I want you to make three lists, three lists. Your first list is the list of your family. And family is more than blood, right? I want you to make this list. Family is anyone that you hold a close connected relationship with. Someone who you, people, well, people who you know that they are there for you purely out of love and you are there for them. That you have a, an unspeakable bond with one another. I have many family members who are of no blood relation to me, but they are my family, my brothers, my sisters, my mothers, my fathers in my life. And many of you have similar. So make a list of family members and recognize that these are the people that you want to cultivate an environment where how you are could bring happiness to them. Not where they bring happiness to you, where you can cultivate a relationship, a situation, an environment that will bring happiness to them. This is sacrificing of yourself. The second list is a list of people that you feel you have injured somehow, that you have done wrong, that you've disrespected, that you have harmed, you've hurt their feelings, that you have uh, cultivated an environment that was unpleasant to them. This list of people, which could be some of your family and friends, which could be worker, co-workers, associates, anyone, your mission here is to rectify the situation, try to fix the situation, try to bring a level where they understand you are truly repentive of the mistakes that you made. This will also help you to alleviate any guilt or shame that you may feel concerning that relationship. And this, my friends, is something that is part of the next video as well. So when you, that's the second list. So when you do that, you have a mission. You have to swallow your pride and go and rectify this situation. And whether or not they are amenable to it does not matter. If they're not, then continue to press on. You cannot force anyone to be or do anything they, they do not desire to be. The third list. This is a list of those who have hurt you. Those who have done you wrong, those who have made you feel a certain way, those who have put you in an environment, those who have caused you to be traumatized throughout your life. Make a list of these people, write down exactly what it is about them, the situation, the environment, what they did, how you felt about everything. Diary, write this down so that you can then take time, sit, meditate, and forgive them. You don't have to go directly to them and forgive them. I'll give you an example. My uncle. I blame my uncle for the heartbreak of my grandmother for years. My uncle never knew it, but I carried around this anger. I carried around this frustration. I carried this around for a very long time. And then I carried around the guilt of the fact that I was feeling this way, that I was blaming him for her early passing out of my life. And so when I made the list of people who I felt injured me, I had to go to him and I apologized to him. I told him what I had been thinking, how I had been feeling. He looked at me and he said, because he never knew, he was like, we're all right, it's, it's fine. I don't know how it made him feel. I don't know what his thoughts were. We never spoke of it again, but I apologized to him. And in doing so, all the guilt, all the frustration, all the anger, everything I had been carrying that he never even knew about, that load was released from my back. And he never thought about it. He never knew it. And we, it didn't change our relationship. We didn't, our relationship then didn't become worse or anything like that. It actually blossomed and became a bit better. So the forgiveness is not for others. The forgiveness is for yourself. As we will discuss in my second video, you cannot carry around fear or guilt. 
and shame and expect to grow, to be happy, to be great, to be amazing. It does not work with one another. And this third item is self-development. Lao Tzu says that if you are not constantly on a path to make yourself better, to grow, to alleviate yourself from the conditioning that you have grown up in. You see, most of us grow up in a society. And in that society, we are taught to be a certain way. And then we also grow up in a family that's within that society. And within that family, we are taught how to be in that society. When do you choose for yourself? What have you chosen for yourself? If you do not pursue personal development, self-development, to grow beyond what others have conditioned you to be, then how will you ever be expected to achieve happiness? Because the happiness that you believe you have is what others have determined what happiness is for you. I've met many people who were in career paths that those career paths were determined by their parents. It was determined by their school teachers. It was determined by their friends. It was determined by one of the worst things, trends. I was almost a victim of this. Fortunately, while I was working at Cub Foods as a teenager, pushing buggies uh, and racking them, I worked with a gentleman who was an architect. He had recently graduated with an architectural degree. I told him I was in the 11th grade that my plans was to become an architect, that that was what I was going to go to school for. Because I had been told that you are a very good artist and architecture is what you should do. This is one of the pathways that my art teacher was telling me I should do from 8th grade up to 11th grade. And so it was embedded in my brain to be an architect. But yet here I am working with an architect. We're both pushing buggies up a hill and he has a full degree, a four year degree as an architect. And he told me that it was very difficult getting the job because when he was coming up, there was a great need for architects when he first started college. But in the four years of him getting to his bachelor's degree, the landscape changed. You see, he fell victim to the trend of what was hot at the time. And at that moment, I realized at 17 that I cannot fall victim to what is hot at the time. That I have to look at what are the stats of people going to school for any one thing and based on that, what the field is going to look like by the time I am ready to step into that field. It changed my perspective on not following trends. Trends are one of the worst ways of personal development. Right now, everybody thinks that they should be an entrepreneur without even recognizing what it takes to become an entrepreneur. If you have not read the e-myth, by I think Michael Gerber. It is a book you should really gain an understanding of because many who are the technicians believe that they should be the business owner when they are not prepared to be the business owner, to take on all the responsibilities that the business owner must take on. The buck stops right here when you are the entrepreneur. The employees only have so much authority and only have so much responsibility. So truly do not follow trends. Do not follow the pathways that others have set for you. Your personal development path is just for you. You have to find out who you are and then who you desire to be and grow from that state of always reverse engineering. This is my point that I want to get to. How do I get there and work your way step by step by step into being that? And as Sun Tzu, as Lao Tzu said, you cannot... The journey of a thousand miles starts with one step. The building of a wall starts with the laying of one brick. Lay the brick, as Will Smith said, as best as you can, that one brick. And before long, you'll have a wall. Look at who you want to be in each day, each moment. Be the best version of what you desire to be. Do what the person that you desire to be every day to the best of your ability and then at before you know it you become exactly what you desire to be and recognize the goal line is always moving it's always moving as you hit one point of capacity a full capacity a whole new sphere 
of capacity for you opens up. A whole new sphere of opportunity opens up for you. And you, because you're already that kind of person, will begin to challenge who you are to move to the next level. The last one of Lao Tzu's principles is self-maintenance. Self-maintenance is not building up a wall in protection and defense of yourself. Self-maintenance is truly ensuring that you are not allowing yourself to be harmed. Building a wall does not do that. Many thought that the Great Wall of China would keep all invaders from breaking through until Kublai Khan came and he broke through the wall. There is always someone or something that can break through your wall. But even in the breaking through of your wall, you must recognize that there is a level of perspective self-maintenance that you must have in order to maintain your status of happiness. For me, is deep meditation maintains it because then my perspective of everything changes. Quick story. <clears throat> there is a Buddhist story that teaches called the crying woman. There was a woman who's had two daughters. One daughter married an umbrella salesman. The other daughter, she married a noodle maker. Anytime that it rained, she would cry and cry and cry because she would think about her daughter who married the noodle maker and recognized that the noodles can't dry out in the sun. So what would happen to their shop? The shop would close down. But then when the sun was shining, then she would cry and cry and cry. And she would worry about her daughter who married the umbrella maker because it's not raining then no one is going to buy umbrellas so his shop would close down and oh my God, what are they going to do? Until she ran across a monk who said, why are you always crying? I heard you're known as the crying lady. And she told the monk why, because of her daughters and the weather. And the monk said, I can cure you, I can heal you, I can fix this for you so that you never cry again. She please do, please do. He told her, anytime that, it, that it's raining, I want you to think about your daughter who married the umbrella salesman and recognize that as it rains, he's going to make more money and their shop is going to prosper. And every time the sun shines, I want you to think about the daughter who, who married the noodle maker and recognize that the brilliance of the sun is going to allow those noodles to harden perfectly and that they're going to make money. So after a while of her changing her perspective, she became known as the smiling lady because every day she smiled because her perspective changed. In the same way we should say, not what do I have to do today, but what do I get to do today? The change of perspective changes your self-maintenance mentally and spiritually. Self-maintenance is also physical. We should have a good exercise program. We should have a good eating regime. Many people in America are in poor health. Why? Mainly because of the way we eat. Mainly because of the, our lack of exercise. These two things are the most contributing aspects to our poor health in America. If you are not maintaining good health, then how can your brain think clearly? If not enough oxygen and nutrients is getting throughout your body, how can you function properly? If you've been given a mission, you've decided what is your mission in life, then how can you achieve that mission if you are too unhealthy to go out and achieve what it is that you desire to achieve? There was a young lady that I knew. She wanted to open up a shoe store. Now she was upward of over 300 plus pounds and her mobility was severely restricted. Now with restricted mobility, it made it very difficult for her to operate a shoe store. It made it very difficult for her to fly and go to the different training programs and different um, events that were going on for her to learn about the industry and become part of the industry. Because mind you, this was before the internet. So you physically had to go places in order to learn more and do more. And in all that time, she never opened a shoe store. She had the idea burning in her mind. 10 years go by, 20 years go by, 30 years go by, and it never happened. She did achieve certain other aspects of her life, but that was a goal that was never achieved, never realized, and why? Because her personal maintenance of her body did not allow for the high blood pressure, the hypertension, the arthritis that came from maintaining a body that could not function in the capacity that was required in order to do what she had always wanted prevented her from ever achieving that goal. 
Your personal health is vital for you to be able to achieve the goals that you desire. If you truly want them, if they are truly something that you desire, then you will move heaven and earth in order for them to happen. But if you can't move, then how can you move heaven and earth in order to achieve that success? You cannot. And in maintaining yourself, when your environment that you surround yourself is toxic like the body, the body expels the toxins. You must act the same way in accordance to nature and expel the toxins of your environment. If the people that surround you are negative influencers to what you are looking to achieve are stressors that prevents you from your achievement or makes it more challenging then it is your self maintenance to either find a way to sit calmly in the storm or remove yourself from the pathway of the storm you don't have to sit in the pathway of the storm but if you choose to find your triggers your mechanism that allows you to sit in peace while in the storm but recognize you cannot forever sit in the storm because even if you find peace it is like the eye of a hurricane there is a storm going on all around you and you found the one peaceful spot but the eye of the hurricane will move and if you are in the same place then you will feel the wrath of the storm as the eye passes. So either you are always in a constant state of personal development, self-development, relationship maintenance, uh, managing your resources, all these combined together, you cannot become happiness. You cannot exist in a state of happiness. Even when you have those around you that are cultivating a state, an environment of happiness. If you are not properly managing yourself, not maintenance, keeping maintenance of yourself and not managing your resources, no matter how much they cultivate, you will not find happiness. For anyone who is a parent would understand this from the perspective of no matter how much you do for your children, sometimes they just won't do right. Just like no matter how much your parents did for you, Sometimes you just won't do right. No matter how many opportunities you have where you live, in the country you're in, the state, the situation, sometimes you just won't do right. So you have to find it within yourself to recognize and open your eyes to see, your single eye I should say, to see the true environment, the true situation, the trueness of what will allow for you to cultivate happiness within yourself because your environment has cultivated happiness that is ready and waiting for you. Then seek that personal development to better your relationships, to manage your resources better, and then maintain it. Always knowing that the change is a constant in the universe and you maintain that happiness by consistently and continuously growing into higher and higher levels of happiness. So I appreciate you guys. Please continue to subscribe to the channel. We have a goal. We are at 5,100 subscribers right now. It is September 14th of 2020. By the end of the year, let's be at 6,000. 6,000 subscribers. So subscribe and share. I greatly appreciate it. Remember, you have to free yourself to be yourself because your greatness is non-negotiable. Good vibrations, good journey.